Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I'm going to be showing you how I use dried flowers with plaster and clay to create a beautiful wall plaque which I then painted and covered with resin and the resin brought it into a whole different dimension. So if you're interested to find out the process in a little bit more of a slowed down fashion than you can see here, please stay tuned and watch out for my other plaster casting videos as well because I've been really interested in it recently and I've been trying to push its boundaries and just see how far I can take it by incorporating resin effects as well. If you're new to my channel don't forget to hit subscribe and ring the bell next to it because then you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay get comfy and enjoy! Right, the first thing I did was I rolled out some modelling clay and it's about one centimetre in depth. I've used those red rolling guides to make sure it's a consistent thickness all the way through. But you don't have to use those, you can use whatever you happen to have. You might have one of those rolling pins with the um, guides on to make sure you're getting it an even thickness. Here I have a template which I cut out earlier and all it is is thick cardboard and I've made sure I cut it out really carefully so it's exactly uh, square on the edges and that comes in really handy a bit later on. What I did was I just pressed it down into the clay to give me some guidelines so I knew where I wanted to place my flowers so to make sure they would be framed properly. And here I've got some fine flowers, the dried flowers and I don't know what they're called, I'm sorry. <laughs> And here I have some lavender. Now, because they're both different thicknesses, what I'm going to do is use the fine uh, flowers first and arrange them all and press them down to make the impression before I do the lavender. Because, the well, the reason I do that is because if you put them all down together and you press on the flowers you're going to be pressing down mainly on the lavender which is thicker and not leaving much of an impression with the finer flowers. So that's why I do small fine things first, press them down and leave them in the clay but then do the thicker flowers as you can see here. I'm just pressing them down with that template. It does come in really handy and I'm giving it a really good firm press all over at first you need to be really gentle so you don't make the flowers move but once you've got it pressed down a little bit you can really give it a good press and I'm using my fondant smoother here and it just makes you it makes it much easier to do it smoothly. Right so now I'm placing the lavender and I've I've sped up most of this video to be honest because I do like to take my time with it and make sure it's exactly how I want it to be and uh, you you would have been still sitting here tomorrow watching it if I hadn't sped it up so yeah I'm, I'm sorry if you don't like videos that have been put to this speed but yeah it was a necessity. So the lavender's all in place and I'm smoothing it all down again just as before. I'm being very, very thorough with this. It's very easy to just miss a little bit when you're pressing and have part of a stem that hasn't made an impression and it's really annoying when you take all your flowers out and you realise that you've got one of the flower heads is just floating in the air with with no stem <laughs> so I, I do really press down really thoroughly and now I'm just using my tweezers to take out all the little lavender buds that got left behind it's quite tedious but it it is needed <laughs> and now I've got the template back again and what I'm going to be doing is cutting around it with a craft knife and make sure you hold down firmly with onto the template and also try and do it in one cut, each side in one cut. Uh, 
because you want a nice smooth edge. Also try not to tilt your craft knife, make sure it's vertical so your edges are also nice and square. Those edges that I'm cutting off, I'm keeping them because I'm going to use those in a moment in the next step. So keep those edges to the side and you will be needing them. I've just realised that I forgot to tell you that the surface I'm working on is a piece of wood. It's actually a serving board and your board needs to be a good couple of inches bigger than your finished piece will be and you'll find out the reason for that soon. But what I've done is I've covered it in an old t-shirt and you'll also see the reason for that soon as well. <laughs> and now I have some pieces of wood all the same size. It doesn't matter the size of your wood as long as it fits around and forms a barrier and all all the pieces need to be exactly the same size so I've covered them in aluminium tape and arranged them around the edge and I'm, I've put that template back in to make sure that I'm getting my sizing right and to make sure that my corners are uh, right angles and it hasn't gone wonky and I've taken that out and what I'm going to do now is th use those pieces that I saved before to press down and make sure it what it does is it keeps the pieces of wood in place but it also stops your plaster of Paris from leaking out from underneath it forms a double barrier So now it's time to fill it with plaster and here I have like a big tub that I use and I've put a plastic bag over it, it's a strong plastic bag and folded it over the edges and what I did was I filled, I put the water in for my plaster of Paris and then I put the plaster of Paris into the water until it was just poking out the top and forming an island and here uh, you've just missed it. <laughs> I'm a bit slow with my narration, but what I did was I mixed it with my hand rather than using a stick or anything. I used my hand because then you can feel any lumps and you just it just works out better. I find it's better for me anyway. And plus, if, if you're doing it with a plastic bag in your tub like I do, you're less likely to um, damage the bag if you just use your hand to mix it. And then when you when it's dried, you can just um, empty all the flakes out of your plastic bag and use it again if there's no holes in it. And here I'm just, I've poured it in and I'm giving it a wiggle around to make sure all the pockets of air are released because there's lots of little places in there that it could trap air in them. And I'm using my spirit level, now I've finished shaking it to make sure it's all good and level. And now with uh, my pliers, which have seen better days, they're a bit like me, a bit rough around the edges now with old age. <laughs> anyway, I'm using my pliers to make a hook with some garden wire. It's a little bit out of focus, I'm sorry. I tried to bring it up to the camera so you could see. So, so anyway, yeah, I'm just looking as I'm speaking. Sorry, I need to concentrate. Yeah, I made two of those hooks and gently put them in and be careful with this because you don't want to press it into the clay because when you uh, take it all, all the clay off at the end you'll see your hooks poking through the front of your picture and you don't want that so just as gently as you can just place them into the plaster I'm actually using tweezers there to make sure I can do it really carefully and then just leave it half an hour and it's ready and here I'm just taking off those clay edges and then it'll be ready to just take the sides off the wood bits and look just watch how easy it comes off that's because of the aluminium foil on the wood if you didn't cover the wood it's a different story <laughs> it's a bit harder to get off and now that's this is where the t-shirt comes in handy on the wood I've just pulled it about to release it so I could get my hand underneath rather than having to put pressure on the plaster picking it up 
And here we are, pulling off the plaster. See how easily it comes off? The Sorry, not the plaster, the clay. And there we have our finished piece. And that needs to be left for a week now. And then you'll be able to paint it. I know it looks dry, but it's not properly dried out for about a week. And if you try painting it before then, you're going to run into problems. So you need to be really patient. Here I'm just taking out some little bits that were left from the flowers with my tweezers. Before I started painting, I used two layers of spray varnish and that's really important that you seal it before you start painting. And I've painted it just with acrylic paints, blue, purple and green, and then gold for the highlighted areas. Now I'm really sorry that that's, this is all you're getting for the painting, it's just the time lapse video. Because my main camera, I didn't know, but my tripod had um, moved and you couldn't really see what I was doing on the main one. Luckily, I was filming a time lapse at the same time on my iPad, so you have at least got some detail. <laughs> Once the paint's completely dry, it's time to cover it with resin. And on the back of it, of the picture, I've used some petroleum jelly around the edges so that any drips that come down will just pop off easily afterwards. When you've done this though, you do need to make sure that you wipe the edges really thoroughly, I mean the sides of the picture really thoroughly after you've put the petroleum jelly on because if any of it has accidentally gone down the side, your resin won't stick to it. You only want the petroleum jelly on the back, not on the sides. There we go. I'm just wiping those sides. I'm using Total Cast resin for this. All the products that I've used, by the way, will be in the description box below, so don't worry about not remembering what I've said. It's all there under the video to have a look at. I'm pouring the resin and the hardener into my silicon bowl and mixing it with my silicon spoon. If, if You might have seen in my other videos that I do use this quite a lot because everything just pops out of it afterwards. Anything that's left behind will just pop out, so I'm not wasting plastic cups or lollipop sticks because the spoon's silicon as well. So I'm mixing it for a good two minutes you, it is really important to be quite thorough with your mixing. And here I'm just pouring it on and you need to get your fingers in there, obviously with your gloves on. <laughs> you need to get your fingers in there and really make sure it's got, it's got into all those little cracks and crevices because there's a lot of them in this. And... You also need to, even when you think you've got all of it covered, move to a different angle, look at it from a different height, a different position. Keep looking at it from all different directions because I, I can guarantee there will be a bit that you've missed if you don't. That's what I did. I sat down and looked at it again and I saw some bits that I'd missed. So the resin will roll down over the edges of this picture and that's what I want it to do because I want the sides to be coated and protected as well. Um, so what you will need to do is just run around, run your finger around it just to, to smooth it down once it's finished. Make sure it's the edges are completely covered in resin and that it's a smooth coating without any drips. Then remove any bubbles with your heat gun and make sure there's no fluff in there that needs picking out and leave it to cure. And here we have the finished piece. Can you see how much the colour pops so much more once that resin's on top? It really does enhance the picture so much. The other benefit of coating your plaster with resin is that it forms an excellent layer of protection for the plaster because plaster can be quite delicate even though I've used a really strong casting um, plaster called stone cast it it is really strong but you know if you knock it it will chip and the resin forms an excellent protective layer 
As always, I'd like to finish off by inviting you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Also, if you could give me a thumbs up because that really does help my channel if it's got lots of thumbs up. And don't forget to leave a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.